It's that time again. This is Katni with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters. Or tune in each week to hear what's going on. Adafruit is continuing to operate as an essential business under New York City Executive Order to provide assistance with the COVID-19 outbreak. Most employees are working remotely, while a few are working in the Adafruit factory to help manufacture and ship desperately needed PPE to the surrounding area and beyond. Adafruit is also assisting local businesses with their PPE needs, as well as sharing the protocols that have helped keep our on-site team safe as we've operated as an essential business. This week, Adafruit has started shipping regular non-COVID-related orders once priority orders are filled. If you've been waiting to place an order with Adafruit, feel free to submit your order now. Be aware that the fulfillment time may be longer than pre-COVID. Note, there may be a number of out-of-stock items as manufacturing has been disrupted. We suggest if an item is out of stock and needed, consider searching one of the many Adafruit resellers. In the U.S., DigiKey is suggested. Blinka is the software compatibility layer which provides Python on single board computers like Raspberry Pi, which run on Linux, the ability to use CircuitPython libraries. It brings all of the drivers and ease of use in CircuitPython to the powerful Linux single board computer world. This week, Blinka is now compatible with 50 single board computers. Write code once and run it on the computer of your choice. See all of the Blinka compatible boards on circuitpython.org slash Blinka. In the fall of 2019, the Python Software Foundation and JetBrains together conducted the official third annual Python Developers Survey. Much like the previous surveys in 2017 and 18, they set out to identify the latest trends and gather insight into what the world of Python development looks like in 2019. The insights from 24,000 Python developers from more than 150 different countries have helped get a picture of the Python community. Some interesting results include 84% of respondents indicated that Python is their main language, and 58% said they use Python for both work and personal projects. For the full results, visit jetbrains.com. CircuitPython 5.4.0 Beta 0 was released last week and includes many new features, improvements, and boards since 5.3.0. Please download the beta by visiting circuitpython.org downloads and downloading the latest unstable release. Testing is invaluable to us. If you encounter any problems or bugs, please file an issue on GitHub at github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython and let us know. Are you enjoying CircuitPython and want to follow the progress on GitHub? Join the over 1,700 others who have starred CircuitPython on GitHub. Visit github.com slash Adafruit slash CircuitPython and click star. The new Adafruit BLE Adafruit CircuitPython library defines many Adafruit BLE services for talking to sensors, controlling NeoPixels and dot stars, and playing tones. The current list of services includes addressable pixel service for working with NeoPixels and dot stars, color sensor service, light sensor service, temperature service, tone service to play tones, and much more. Check out the library by downloading the latest CircuitPython library bundle from circuitpython.org libraries. Learn about CircuitPython, Device Simulator Express, and PyBadge in a Twitch stream held by Michael Crump with Nina Zakarenko. Check out MB Crump on Twitter for more details. Microsoft has an entire video channel dedicated to the use of their MakeCode block language. Recently, some MakeCode environments, notably MakeCode for Minecraft and MakeCode for Microbit, have added Python as an additional programming method. With their educational streams, Microsoft has been introducing Python and MakeCode. Check out the videos by visiting mixer.com slash MakeCode and clicking on Past Streams. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. One important feature of CircuitPython is translated control and error messages. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding or improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. Since opening this capability last week, we've received hundreds of contributions, including a finished Swedish translation. If you write another language, visit hosted.weblate.org engage circuitpython, sign in, and start translating. 
You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites like GitHub, Google, or Facebook. From the desk of Lady Ada this week, Lady Ada tested out RGB matrix support in CircuitPython for the STM32F405. Check it out on YouTube. Adafruit has always been an open source hardware company, predating the Open Source Hardware Association certification process. We have finished submitting all of our hardware to Oshawa for certification as open source. The application process for roughly 390 Adafruit boards that were submitted was finished two weeks ago. Of the 390 submitted, 384 of them have been approved so far. There are currently 858 projects certified by Oshawa, making certifications for Adafruit projects almost 45% of all projects Oshawa has certified. See the open source certified projects in the Certified Projects directory on certification.oshawa.org. The Open Source Hardware Association requires submissions to list the three licenses covering a submitted project, those for the hardware, software, and documentation. To list these, Jeffrey U. Warren wrote a program to generate an SVG graphic with the same classic look as U.S. nutrition facts on foods, with the three licenses as entered by a user in a web page. Check it out at jywarren.github.io slash certification dash mark dash generator slash facts. For the last three weeks, IoT Makers Israel has held a stay-at-home challenge to encourage people to create a hardware or electronics project. Sponsored by Adafruit, participants were asked to make an interesting project that you want to do using an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express, using the board or simulated in software. The challenge ended last Friday, and they announced the winners via Facebook. Karen Chechik, Dor Alt, and Amit Edvi. Karen's entry? recreating the piano scene from the movie Big with Circuit Python and the Circuit Playground Express. Learn about the Adafruit Trinket M0 and Circuit Python from Gary Explains on YouTube. Timon writes on Twitter about the NXP IMX 1020 evaluation board. What an absolute chonky unit those IMX RTs are. Well, that was very easy. Flash the Arturo 182 Tiny UF2 and then Adafruit Circuit Python, which I didn't even have to compile and could just download the UF2 from circuitpython.org. Best vendor dev board experience without even having touched the vendor tools. Learn how to remote control your Raspberry Pi camera from the web in this article on Tom's Hardware. Flame Eyes wrote a blog post about creating a Pokemon insulin reminder light with Feather and Circuit Python. Code is available on GitHub. Visit flameyes.blog for all the details. Create a dual color bar graph using CircuitPython by following along with this Instructables written by Tony Go2. Check it out on instructables.com. Command a Nina B302-801-11 with an Alexa voice assistant using CircuitPython. Awesome MicroPython covers everything MicroPython in an awesome list. Find a curated list of awesome MicroPython libraries, frameworks, software, and resources on GitHub at github.com slash mcauser slash awesome dash micropython. Void Loop, Robotech, and Automation posts to YouTube logging DHT11 data into Google Sheets with MicroPython and ESP32 and ESP8266. Octopus Lab posts to Twitter a video of playing a WAV file using an ESP32 and MicroPython. Check out the video on YouTube. Tech Tutorials posts to YouTube installing MicroPython on the ESP8266. Check out displaying the MicroPython REPL to a TFT display in this blog post on blog.buchow.com. Welcome to the Jungle posts an interview with two of the .py conference speakers, Victor Stinner and Julian Danju, discussing the performance of the Python programming language. Visit welcometothejungle.com to read the full interview. Les P's Friday Fun blog post this week is a comparison of BASIC on the Commodore 64 and Python on the Raspberry Pi, including sequence, selection, and iteration. Check it out at bigl.es. The Humble Bundle presents the Learn You Some Python Humble Book Bundle this week, including books like Automate the Boring Stuff with Python, Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python, Python for Kids, Python Crash Course, and more. Check it out at humblebundle.com slash books. Tech with Tim posts a six plus hour complete Python course for beginners. The course is designed to take you from beginner to pro. It assumes no prior knowledge and is perfect for beginners. Find it on YouTube. Check your Python learning progress and take your skills to the next level with interactive quizzes from RealPython. 
Each quiz has a series of questions, some multiple choice, some requiring a typed in answer, and some requiring writing Python code. Visit realpython.com slash quizzes to get started. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers and single board computers grows every week. This week, there were 11 new boards added to circuitpython.org, including the Great Fet 1, Odroid C4, Thunderpack, and FOMU. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn system for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There were three new Python on hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn system this week, including create a metal detector using an Adafruit clue with a few common components and an easy to make coil in this guide from Kevin Walters, and add cellular connectivity to your CircuitPython project using Phona to build projects that can transmit and receive data from just about anywhere using cellular data in this guide from Brent Rubel. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 230. There are two new libraries this week, Adafruit CircuitPython BLE Adafruit and Adafruit CircuitPython LAS331, as well as a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Dan finished up the Adafruit BLE services library. It provides BLE services that work with the Bluefruit Playground app and the web Bluetooth dashboard. You'll also be able to use the library to build custom clients and servers to send whatever sensor or control data you want. He's written CircuitPython programs for the Circuit Playground Bluefruit, the Clue, and Feather Bluefruit Sense that communicate with the app. Stay tuned for new learn guides about this library. Along the way, he worked with Antonio, the app developer, to debug and fix some minor bugs on both sides of the code. This week, he'll start looking at implementing underscore BLEIO using the Bleak library on host computers. Jeff is continuing his quest to make SD cards work better in CircuitPython. He's putting his attention on the STM32F405 Feather. This board uses SDIO instead of SPI to communicate with the SD card. Right now, he's studying how the code needs to be restructured to allow both kinds of connections. He also worked on fixing several bugs in the last beta release of CircuitPython. These bugs were related to audio and gamepad functionality, and the fixes should be in the next release of 5.4.0. Melissa has been working on adding support for the Great Fet 1 to Blinka. This board has more than just a lot of GPIOs. It supports pulse width modulation, analog input and output, I squared C, SPI, and UART. She was able to write a wrapper for the Great Fet library, so Blinka is able to use many of the libraries available. She is hoping this helps anybody who also happens to own a Great Fet and wants to get started with unlocking its potential. PyCon US 2020 online continues with many talks, tutorials, and more already posted. Visit us.pycon.org 2020 online to find links to all of the currently available content or sign up for the mailing list to receive updates. Virtually Maker Fair, featuring makers and projects primarily responding to COVID-19, will be May 23, 2020. It provides an opportunity for makers to connect, share their projects, and talk about what they do and how they do it. It will take place completely online through video sessions over a 24-hour period and as a curated collection of maker exhibits. Visit makerfair.com for more information. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26, including two conference days with keynotes, talks, lightning talks, and poster sessions, and two sprint days with multiple sprint teams. Attending the conference will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they are holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd through 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is open now through the 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for details regarding the CFP and the conference. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 19,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.